again so we're going to start over in hawaii and there's there are so many different things to touch on right now there's a 5.5 magnitude quake that rattled the big island and um, actually i've seen a 5.8 as well uh listed and when the last video from last night we were talking about a huge ramp up there's a cycle going on right now it's gone on for three days in which you'll see a drop off after a ramping up of uh, earthquake activity which leads to a basically a volcanic um, eruption and then a new buildup so there's a cycle going on that's building up in intensity and as we've looked we see that the um, equator uh, the caldera itself at Kilauea has been basically collapsing and it's it's changing everything is changing so it's in a point right now where it's going to end up collapsing down in upon itself and that could end up sealing off more more of this area causing pressure in other places and it, you know, it's very interesting what's going on right now uh, very very interesting the situation hasn't stopped at all for sure and actually it, it is actually increasing and when we look at um, the live feed at what's going on right now uh, right now we're in a decreasing uh, phase after the what we see here a 5.5 volcanic eruption and that's five kilometers west southwest of the volcano of Kilauea and you can see again look at the depth negative 1.1 kilometers so that means above sea level which really you know it has to be pretty much magma uh, you could see explosions going on that would give you that type of reading as far as the depth so this is what's been going on we've been getting this it ramps up it erupts lets off a little steam then we see the numbers of, of quakes start to rise again and, and go up 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 and then it'll let off steam again so it's, it's cycling through this we see uh, a lot of different quakes going on right here and this is one of note negative 3.2 kilometers so when we look at this and this is in a very similar area to where there was another one the other day it's only 1.9 yes but again it's it's the location and the height so when we look at what does this actually mean when an earthquake occurs at a depth of zero kilometers or even negative and so when we read what the USGS says it says you know sometimes there's errors made and it could be a glitch and etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, however it's one of those things that that could be a magma flow indicator or in the case of you know mining things like that where they're actually um, you know an explosion that happens above sea level because this is all related to sea level it's all related to sea level so negative 3.2 kilometers is basically 10,498 feet above sea level so that means that it's got to be on a summit somewhere it's got to be somewhere pretty high and when we put the coordinates in we see where it is it's, it's over right here on the ridge of Mauna Loa so we could see where this earthquake is and again that would you know it could indicate magma movement underneath the ground and we've seen this consistently so it's something to be very aware of because all the things that are happening are over here you know as we could see you know Kilauea over here volcano and everything has moved the lava flow you know heading out to the ocean over here and um, so it's something to be aware of because obviously Mauna Loa is is massive and on a different scale and so also it's a thing where we have to alert people in other sections of the island as well because if this became a, a, an issue and this was erupting then um, you know then then you have a, a much bigger set of worries there and uh, it's, it's something for us to keep our eyes on and as always we, we send our prayers and best wishes to them 
So one of the things I've, I've noticed too, as we look at this article, and this is talking about Hawaiian evacuees leaving homes as new, new lava threatens on the big island. And uh, of course they've had issues as we were talking about before with, um, you know, people, as my computer is starting to have issues here, it's not the computer. It, what this is, is actually uh, the internet speed, which I have a very high speed. And I'm noticing this, and are you guys noticing this? Because I'm noticing a lot of uh, the people out there are having issues with internet speed. And some of you guys have mentioned, you know, is it what's going on with the magnetosphere and with uh, interruptions? Are we starting to see deterioration going on? in our systems because of the magnetosphere decline and all the you know energy coming in and starting to interfere with our satellites and feeds and signals because I, I think that that might be starting to happen and because uh, I've noticed a lot of my other fellow youtubers are, are going through the same thing and and some of you have made mention of it as well so I think we are starting to get that and that that's gonna really be disconcerting when we have major events going on and we can't communicate effectively. And I don't look forward to that time, uh, which is probably rapidly coming close to us at this moment. Last night we were talking about the eruption at El Fuego and uh, we can see, you know, at least 25 killed, 300 injured. It's probably way more than that. Probably way, way more than that. Let's hope not. Uh, but it, this one caught people off guard by the intensity and, and how much it projected particulates and, and lava and missiles all around the area so rapidly. And there's so many videos of people just standing there and filming it. And meanwhile, it's coming and then they go to turn and I'm not going to play them here, but they go to turn and they can't get out. They, they've totally underestimated the speed. So then they get covered and buried and realize that this is toxic you know it's not just that you know you have to worry about getting hit uh, by debris or getting swallowed up in a lava flow the fumes are toxic and and people underestimate that and these are people that live there and it's an indication that this is not typical now as far as what we're seeing and this this one output here was huge and so the deaths so far are, are concentrated in the towns of El Rodeo, Alo Tenano and San Miguel and just a, a scary scary thing over 3,000 people evacuated it still presents a present danger and, and could produce more mud and pyroclastic flows the residents are advised to wear masks as protection against falling ash. Obviously not from the ash falling on you and causing you to burn, but just again, that toxic fumes that's coming out of here. It's just, it's just incredible. And it's scary as hell, <laughs> you know, to see this. And especially the reactions of some people and just standing there and just watching it and not getting away until it's too late and then they're they're gone you know they're just covered up in it and again this is this is another article on that showing a rescue over a little girl on uh on his back it's something to be aware of and so when we when we look at and we've talked so much about safe places and you know i've i've brought up before um the Appalachian Mountains, you know, actually specifically talked about Asheville and that whole area, Asheville and Boone, you know, and on down. And then we see the massive flooding, we see dams breaking, we see houses buried in mudslides. And then, you know, we've talked about New Mexico, Colorado, the Four Corners area, Arizona, Southern Utah, and we see the massive wildfires over there as well. And we see all the trees and all the forests that are are suffering and looking like they're burnt and torched uh, you know probably you know I I, I want to say it's possibly from the increased UV increased intensity of what's going on as well as the drought and as well as you know um, 
everything really considered and and the temperatures over there are are crazy and heading up much much higher so you know those are two of the safe zones we've already and we've also talked about the ozarks being a possible location as well and again now we have to worry about or keep in mind the new madrid because you know that's something that could go many people have foreseen that going and that will it really vastly impact that whole area as well so we can see that there's going to be challenges anywhere you are living anywhere you're living if you're living up in you know the northern tier states if you're living in wisconsin minnesota if you're living in maine vermont new hampshire um if you're living in canada you know we know we're in a grand solar minimum we saw what the winter looked like the winter is going to be worse this year so just keep that in mind and, and especially with these volcanoes going off so what if we get another you know four or five eruptions like we saw out of uh, fuego or higher level eruptions which are probably going to come what if you know there starts to be a, a lot of eruptions up in uh up in alaska what if um some of the west coast ones wake up you know mount rainier mount st helens so chances are we're going to get a lot more volcanic activity so you have so many things to consider and let's not lose um hope you know because there are going to be challenges in every area that we look at it's just a matter of of realizing the challenges that you face in your area and and doing what you can do to you know get yourself situated as best as possible so meteorite fragments from june 1st fireball are found several homes were damaged in china from from that fireball up in china and there was also one down in south africa and again, as we had said before, so many of you guys had seen asteroids going in, you know, meteors coming in and hitting the oceans. Uh, specifically, it seems like everybody's had the vision of the Atlantic Ocean being hit and it causing a tsunami. And, you know, not everybody, but I mean, many people have, have reached out to me and said that. I, I've, I've seen that multiple, multiple, multiple times. So... It's something, you know, I, I do totally believe that we have a collective um, super consciousness between us. I think we are all waves. We're all peaks of a wave in one big ocean. So we could tap into each other and we could tap into something greater and we could get a glimpse of what is a possible happening, a possible future. And again, can we change it? I believe we can because I do believe that we are in a free will zone and uh, we're co-creating this as we go so they found four fragments two of the four found pieces fell through house roofs one fell to the dry ground another in a rice field they range from the size of a ping pong ball to a few hundred grams so very very interesting and we'll see what happens with that and maybe they'll find some fragments of the one down in South Af Africa as well. Flooding causes road closures, stalls traffic in D.C. Yes, it, it's still ongoing in the east. D.C. and Maryland still getting tons of rain, still really getting hammered. Uh, West Virginia was hammered big time last night as well. Um, and, and there's so much going on here. The USGS releases new data on Oklahoma earthquake activity. Do you think they're going to come right out and say it's it's basically due to fracking? Uh, the, the results of a new study of Oklahoma's fault lines has local geologists and se seismologists very excited. The USGS sent a plane over the state to map magnetic images of the Earth's basement layer, and they revealed some new information. This new set of data is allowing scientists to better understand the ongoing seismic activity because they can now see how different types of rock interact. Last August, the USGS sent a plane fitted with a magnetic sensor over 18 Oklahoma counties with the highest groupings of seismic activity, including the Woodward and Fairview areas, as well as an area covering Prague up to Pawnee. The goal was to see how the magnetic signatures of different rocks might indicate where previously undisco undiscovered fault lines lie. 
there's not really another example like this in the world. So we have the opportunity to get a lot of detail about what's going on, says OGS director Jeremy Boke. Boke is thrilled to dive deep into the results compiled by his former colleague Kevin Crane and Anji Shah from the USGS. The data has already revealed that the fault lines, fault lines lie on a better angle for earthquakes at the basement level compared to closer to the Earth's surface. The new maps also show pieces of faults researchers could not see before now. Boak points to the one area west of Cushing, saying, here is a fault that comes over here and stops right at this fault on our trace, but you can see something is continuing through there. Overlaying the earthquakes onto the magnetic maps show just how connected they are to each other, potentially helping oil industry regulators in the future. Yeah, all about the oil industry, the corporate Commission, corporation commission they've really still only got one tool to change things and that's telling someone to and stop injecting in this well ultimately Boke and his fellow researchers hope to be able to prevent induced earthquakes altogether the ideal he says we'd be able to point to an area and say here's an area that's at risk that's what you're really targeting scientists will be combining new and old information in phases over the course of the next few weeks, they hope to obtain more money to map out the rest of the state. And uh, yeah, well, we, we do know, again, the U.S., ever since fracking, has, has become a major producer. And we have emergency of, of oil. Emergency declared in St. Francis County, Arkansas, after severe storms injure one and destroy an airport. So severe storms in Arkansas, everywhere we look, there's these crazy storms going on now. Corn, soybeans, cotton fields, and an airport destroyed in St. Francis County from recent storms. And, and this is all going to add up. This is completely all going to add up, my friends. You know, look, look at what we got here. We're going to have a lot of increased food prices it's just that simple and then food shortages it, it's we could see what's coming it's so so clear even after the rain stops flooding continues to cause problems throughout maryland it's it's just not really easing up and so you know there there's just so much going on we have major new discoveries a major physics experiment just detected a particle that shouldn't exist Scientists have produced the firmest evidence yet of so-called sterile neutrinos, mysterious particles that pass through matter without interacting with it at all. The first hints of these elusive particles turned up decades ago. But after years of dedicated searches, scientists have been unable to find any other evidence for them, with many experiments contradicting those old results. These new results now leave scientists with two robust experiments that seem to demonstrate the existence of sterile neutrinos, even as other experiments continue to suggest sterile neutrinos don't really exist at all. That means there's something strange happening at the universe, making humanity's most cutting-edge physics experiments contradict one another. And that's a good indication as to the very nature of the universe itself. Why are all these things contradictory? You know, ask yourself these questions. What is reality, really? Really, what is it? Is it just simply an agreed upon set of circumstances? We all agree upon this, or most of us agree upon this, so that's really reality? Why do things seem to be so flexible? so contradictory at times why can you know some people see things in one particular way and then another set look at all the evidence and see it in a totally different way is it perhaps that each one of us is really experiencing their own reality according to their beliefs their their preconceptions Is there no real, solid, tangible reality at all? Is it all really something that's so subjective? What are your thoughts on that?
And meanwhile, as we go through all this, right, and no matter what your perception of reality is, you have to admit, we are living in pretty wild times. There is a lot going on with the earth. And there's a lot of earth changes happening. And so we still have the politicians doing their thing, playing their games. And is it all just a game of distraction? Is it all just one big shell game? EU army looms. Merkel backs Macron's European Defense Force initiative. And so this poster child here, um, he's really, he's really tried to grab that center stage and uh, to me he seems to be one of the biggest tools of the Illuminati cabal out there seems pretty obvious um, he's completely a tool for them not that they all are not tools but here you have you know Angela Merkel who now has supported in principle the idea of a joint European defense force proposed by French President Emmanuel Emmanuel, God with us. Well, I don't know. I don't know about Macron being Emmanuel. Germany's opposition had been the main stumbling block for the much-discussed project. I am in favor of President Macron's proposal for intervention initiative. Intervention initiative. Doesn't that just sound kind of evil? intervention initiative it sounds pretty aggressive to me so hmm however such an intervention force with a common military strategic culture much must fit into the structure of defense cooperation duh i mean isn't it amazing how how, how they have such a talent at saying nothing uh or stating obvious and yet you know, the whole world hinges on, on the words of the leaders when the leaders are not really the leaders at all. These are just puppets. You know, there, it, can you see the marionette strings right here? Can you see that? Pulling up the corners of those mouths. Big smile now. Nod their heads, the little marionette strings going up and down. Showing us what they want us to see. And yet we could see through the speech, you know, what's really going on. During the key speech at Sorbonne University last September, Macron proposed a European military intervention force that would protect the continent by taking actions in hot spots around the globe. Okay, protect the continent by going out of the continent and imposing your will on other countries is what you mean exactly what has been going on with the United States now for for decades so this is aimed at integrating European defense capabilities but the talks on implementing the European Defense Force have so far been complicated due to Berlin's cautions approaching the initiative European defense cooperation is very important of the 180 weapon systems that currently coexist in Europe we must move to a situation like the United States, which has only about 30 weapons systems. Following Donald Trump's withdrawal from the Iranian nuclear deal, which the EU considers crucial and a tariff war unleashed by Washington against Brussels, the European leaders began questioning the ability and desire of the U.S. to be a guarantor of security for Europe. Time to take fate into its own hands. Europe can't rely on U.S. protection anymore, says Merkel. So it's no longer the case the United States will simply just protect us. Rather, Europe needs to take its fate into its own hands. That's a task for the future. The German Chancellor was fully backed by Macron, who urged the European Union not to be weak. Last week, Austrian ch Chancellor also called on Europe to remain united because the U.S. has recently become more and more unreliable for us. And Trump vows to deal with Germany and other NATO allies not contributing enough. Trump also promised to deal with Germany as a country that has not contributed what it should be contributing to the U.S.-led NATO-backed military bloc. The 
statement came after German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen said last month that Berlin will only increase military spending by 1.5% of gross domestic product by 2025, interesting year, instead of the 2% desired by Washington. So why does Washington want a 2%? Do they really just want them to pull more of their own weight? Or is this really just simply, is this, you know, how much profits the military industrial complex wants and is demanding? You know, when you look at it, the military industrial complex is completely behind the U.S. And as I stated before, I feel like there could be infighting between, you know, the banking cabal and the military industrial complex wing. And uh, perhaps, you know, with President Trump in charge, the military industrial complex wing is in charge of the executive branch and in some, to some degree. It's all infighting, though. It's all infighting really with the bigger picture being that, you know, these people don't have humanity's best interests in mind, you know, because really what does the military industrial complex do? It kills people for profit. That's, it gets us to kill each other for profit. And it's demanding quotas. <laughs> you know, that's what it's demanding, quotas. Meanwhile, we have these earth change disasters upon us. And they're getting us to look over at this particular shell when we should be looking in a totally different area all along and not coming into their mindset not not signing on with what they're trying to sell putin signs law on countermeasures against us and its allies and that's basically counter sanctions and um you know it, it it's all basically just a game and it's all distraction when uh, humanity and the earth at large is faced with you know, mass cataclysms on an epic scale. And they're still playing these games and they're still basically trying to get us to look away from the bigger picture. They're trying also to get us pulled down into lower vibrations because they want to keep us divided. That's how they keep control. And I've said this a million times, my friends, it's all about divide and conquer. And that's how the few control the many. It's all through keeping people divided, you know, and, and feeding them ideological systems, feeding them belief systems, and then playing those belief systems against each other, manipulating them. We, we had talked about Albert Pike before and the three world wars that they have planned according to Albert Pike. It's not just Albert Pike. It's, it, there's so many. There's the Agenda 21 uh, map that we saw as well that showed very, very um, similar numbers uh, to Deagle. And whether Deagle is you know, a shell company by the DOD and, and uh, the CIA, whether it's um, misdirection, it's, it's not some kids out of a basement. It could be complete misdirection by the C CIA and the DOD, um, but I still don't think it's misdirection because there's so many people that have seen this. Washington's vision, and, and again, is Washington's vision legit? We don't really know. Do we really know? I mean, there's documentation on it, and uh, you know, there's so many others that have seen these things, Nostradamus, Casey, uh, Alois Ermeister, um, Baba Vanga, uh, Mother Shipton. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. There, there's, there's tons. And then there's, if you just do a, a Google search for prophecies of World War III, you'll come up with tens of thousands, if not more, different people that have seen this. You know, and we know it's been part of the plans by the cabal because... This is how they keep us in the Georgia Guidestone, you know, um, mentality of, of whittling the population down. You know, whether it's flood, whether it's plague, whatever it is, 
it's there's always methods and, and means to bring the population back down to to destroy the civilization once it reaches a peak so we need to really question that and we need to think you know we don't want to fall prey to negative thinking but we have to recognize what's going on and the fact that we are we are being controlled and we are being targeted and we are being manipulated and pitted against each other and um, and still there are so many that are so just completely blind to what's going on just completely have their heads in the sand and then there are those that understand they could see the things that are going on but they still have a belief system that is completely a belief system that was given to them by the cabal and the illuminati in the first place and and realize you know how far back this goes this goes back thousands of years everything that you were taught everything you were taught as a kid could be a lie every single thing you know it it all could be lies there are so many contradictions everywhere so we must really use discernment and that can only come from within as we look over here chaos and cover-ups what evidence exists of ancient pole shifts you know most of the mainstream scientists don't believe in crustal displacement but there's so much evidence that there is crustal displacement the evidence is really overwhelming when you start looking at it yes we have a magnetic pole reversal that happens and it's not even always a, a complete 180 reversal it, it doesn't necessarily have to be there's tremendous evidence that the poles have moved many many times and as this says, most people don't want to know that this is coming. They don't want to know that America replace, could replace Atlantis in legends of lost civilizations. Your government censors the evidence to make, you, to make sure you'll keep working and funding their preparations until it happens. But for those who are willing to look, the evidence exists. Just look at coral. Coral, lava, and different equators wherever there are shallow oceans near the earth's equator there are tropical coral reefs picture distinct stripes of coral species running parallel with the equator if the surface of the earth stayed fixed in its current orientation there would only be one circle of coral reefs around our planet at our current equator but instead there are many bands of ancient coral crisscrossing the earth marking many previous equators Charles Hapgood tells us there's even evidence of warm coral and seas stretching right across Antarctica. He cited coral expert Ting Yi H. Ma of the University of Fukien. After studying corals in Alaska, Spitzenberg, and Antarctica, Dr. Ma concluded that many total displacements of the entire outer crust of the Earth must have taken place. In Ma's words, the coral evidence he found could only be explained by the sudden sliding of the solid earth shell over the liquid core, leading to a sudden change in latitudinal positions. So when liquid lava flows from a volcano, it cools down, solidifies, and liquid forms, ions of iron, align themselves in the magnetic field of the earth. We can analyze solid lava rock and determine which directions these molecules point towards and it will indicate the direction of the magnetic pole at the time of solidification. The earliest analysis I have seen published in 1955 by John W. Graham, and his conclusion was the rocks were magnetized by a geomagnetic field about like the one today, the essential difference being that this field was in a significantly different orientation. This result is discussed in terms of a slip of an outer shell of the Earth relative to the axis of revolution. Lava fields at Steens Mountain in Oregon show north itself was moving up to 6 degrees per day while the lava cooled. 6 degrees per day while the lava cooled. Robert Coe and Michael Prevost published their initial analysis in 1989 under the title Evidence Suggests Extremely Rapid Field Variation During a Geomagnetic Reversal and noted that the magnetic field changes during solidification implies astonishingly high rates of change in the geomagnetic field. Their most likely explanation was rapid variation of the geomagnetic field direction during cooling. The most famous flash-frozen mammoth carcass, the Berez, Berezovka mammoth, 
had many species of unchewed grasses, mosses, beans, and buttercups in its mouth and undigested in its stomach. Given the life cycle of these flowering plants, it was concluded that the mammoth died in late July or the beginning of August and was frozen almost instantly. Summer temperatures must have fallen very fast. Imagine how much body heat a mammoth must have had while alive and how vegetation in the stomach acid would deteriorate if not quickly frozen. What kind of temperature drop must have occurred to freeze a mammoth solid so quickly? Would a 60 degree drop in two hours be enough? Additional evidence suggested that mammoths were not suited to cold climates. The lack of sebaceous glands in the skin. Most arctic animals have sebaceous glands to secrete oil and lubricate the skin to prevent cracking in the cold, dry air. But studies of mammoth skin have showed that their skin cells are absolutely identical to those of Indian elephants today. The idea that mammoths lived in an icy wasteland and never ate anything might be a popular image, but this misunderstanding fails to account for the 500 pounds of fresh vegetation required for their food every day. Dr. William Farrand once wrote in an article titled Frozen Mammoths and Modern Geology that an apparent paradox remains that the climate in northern Siberia was warmer than at present at some period in late glacial times when climates elsewhere on the earth were cooler than present. So the pole shift theory explains it easy. The North Pole was in the Hudson Bay at the time. Canada was covered in an ice sheet because it was the North Pole. It had an ice age in the same way that Greenland and Antarctica have them now. They are located at the poles now. When the Laurentide ice sheet formed, evidence shows it did not spread south from our current North Pole. The ice spread out in all directions from Hudson Bay. When the poles shifted, the North American ice sheet melted, but the Siberian froze. Most lands suffered massive changes. Assuming the legends of an advanced civilization like Atlantis might have existed over 13,000 years ago, and that their civilization was destroyed when a pole shift put their homeland at much worse, much worse latitude and altitude, I often wonder if certain ancient monuments are much older than when we are taught. For example, the Great Pyramid in Giza, which incorporates so much mathematical and scientific data in its measurements, a monument we may not even be able to duplicate today, seems unlikely to have been built as recently as my modern mainstream Egyptologists insist it was. And, you know, with the weathering alone, it had to have been basically, you know, back at Ice Age, our last Ice Age, or, or before that. And when we look about coral reefs, we find coral reefs in all these locations. Look at these blue dots. So either we don't have the proper understanding of coral reefs, or the poles have shifted and we have had crustal displacement. And so there's, there's so much evidence to crustal displacement. And then that brings into effect the, the questions of, again, where's safe zones? Where are there safe zones? If, if you're going to have these type of mass, massive crustal displacements, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we each have to, you know, find our peace within ourselves. Um, obviously, it's not going to be good to be on coastlines, and that's for sure. And I still am getting from you guys, what are you doing there? Practice what you preach. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm planning on my move. I'm going to make a move. It's just not quite time yet. Um, I'm, it's, it's close, though. And um, same thing with many, many of you, including some of my new neighbors that have, you know, reached out and let me know that they're in the same area and they're thinking the same things. So... There's so much to take into effect when we look at different areas. I mean, we saw what happened right now with Guatemala and what a volcano can do. And there could be much more massive eruptions than that. And that's pretty, pretty scary. So you must look within. Always, always, always look within, my friends. Look within and, and let your inner wisdom guide you. Use, use your left brain, analyze things, get all your data. And then really get quiet time to yourself. Communicate to source in whatever way you view source as. And, you know, whether we believe it or not, we do all have guides on the other side. We do all have these positive beings that are trying to help us from the other side. And a lot of times when we, when we get these intuitions and these hunches, it's those beings trying to guide us. 
And, uh, you know, it could be loved ones that have passed on. It could be loved ones from other lives that, that are not in the flesh right now. And it could be other beings from other realms. And we shouldn't be terrified of all other beings just because, you know, some authors of some scriptures or books have tried to make us afraid of everything that there is besides them. So, you know, keep that in mind because there, there are definitely positive beings out there trying to help us and the other thing too is we are evolving this this energy that's coming inwards is causing an evolution in us it's changing our dna and we've talked about you know we are a two-strand dna being at the moment because there are many uh lines of thought out there many philosophies many uh ancient scriptures even that point towards us becoming 12 strand DNA and then we've seen where science has actually found people with three strands of DNA and now some are supposedly being found with four strands of DNA so mutations do happen uh, I know a couple of people laughed at the word evolution thinking all evolution is, is a joke and not real things evolve things change that's just the nature of the universe everything is energy energy is constantly changing form Energy can't be created or destroyed. It simply, it simply shifts from one form to another. It evolves. It changes. And so this is a study that shows exercise mitigates genetic effects of obesity later in life. You know, let's not use our genes and uh, things of the sort as a crutch and say, well, you know, everybody in my family's always been overweight. We've always had to use this medication, that medication, you know, nothing I could do about it. Uh, pass me the Twinkie, you know, or hey, when you stop, when you stop at the store, can you stop at McDonald's and get me uh, four double cheeseburgers? How we live affects our bodies tremendously. And I see it all the time in people. And, and you see people that are um, severely obese, and, and they're fighting all sorts of allergies, and they're fighting migraines, and they're fighting uh, cholesterol issues, and, and they're fighting diabetes, and they'll take all the drugs in the world, but they simply won't go exercise and change their diet. And if we, if we do exercise, and if we do change our diet, we can have such a tremendous effect on our bodies, as well as take the time to meditate. Take the time to learn like Qi Gong or Tai Chi or do some yoga to integrate body, mind, and breath. It's such a powerful practice. Take control of your life and, and don't give up just because you know everybody in your family has this genetic problem. You know, deal with it and tackle it head on by by creating a lifestyle that's going to make you healthier. Because we can rewrite our, our DNA, we could rewrite our genes, we could rewrite it all. This world is pliable, it's flexible, and we have much more control over it than we imagine, even when it appears to be falling apart all around us. We can still change it. And uh, there's even the thoughts that we could jump timelines and we could go into a different dimension in consciousness just by shifting our consciousness. Every night when you go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning, you know, it's like we have a fresh new opportunity to view the day in a different light and to take control of our own destinies and, and to make things better by basically bettering ourselves. And yeah, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us right now, but, but we are still in the driver's seat. We could control this, each one of us. It's, it's a matter of us learning to take control over our life and our mindset, and then we will help others lift up and out of the mindsets of division and disunity into one of unity, brotherhood, and sisterhood. So think about that, my friends. Think about that. Healthy lifestyle, healthy food, healthy choices, embracing things that are going to be constructive instead of destructive. And let, you know, obviously we can't just simply ignore everything happening until the volcano erupts next door and lava rains down on us or until, you know, the earthquake hits and, and we had no plan or until the hurricane hits and we didn't ever listen to the news while everybody is running away, packing their cars and taking off. Yeah, we have to be alert. We do. We, we, we should. I mean, these times are extraordinary. But also, you know, don't allow fear to creep in. So view things. View things with, as Buddha said, a detached manner. 
and don't don't allow yourselves to be drawn in and then send your compassion and love to all beings that are are in need of love and compassion and and make that be the way that you are with everybody every day and i i, I love seeing what i see you guys you guys are so amazing pulling each other up and 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 drawing this circle of protection around this family that we're creating. And we will do that. We'll keep doing that. We'll keep each other informed. And we'll keep learning and growing together. So we will all keep moving in a positive light, in a positive direction. If, if you're a visitor, please do subscribe and join our growing family because we, we take care of each other and we look out for each other and we do lift each other up as well as keep each other aware and informed. So go ahead, subscribe, and click the bell so you get all the updates. Share with as many people as possible so we can wake up as many as possible. The more people are awake, the less people that will be panicking when the shit's hitting the fan in our own backyard. And it could happen anytime, any way, but we shouldn't be panicked about that. We should just be mindful, aware, and prepared. And the biggest preparations we can make are of a spiritual kind. And, and being at right with ourselves and, and with all our loved ones and each other. For, you know, this is, again, this is spirit having a physical experience. And while, you know, we are in a body, I truly, for one, don't believe we are the body. The body is just our vehicle. And, and we've had other bodies before, by my beliefs. And it hit me when I was five years old. I just knew, just standing there staring off into space, it just hit me that I'm in here, but I'm not this body. And it just was a sense of realization, self-realization so strong. At such a young age, I just knew that to be the truth. It was something I just knew. And so it's always been with me that that is the truth. And even though we might shed the body, as the Bhagavad Gita says, you know, Worn out bodies are shed by the dweller just as worn out garments are, sweat, are shed by the, the user. So it's the same thing. But it's all about what we do, how we act while we're here, how we pick up each other, how we show our love and compassion to each other. That's what this is all about. How are we going to handle these times? So as always, my friends, thumbs up to uh, support the channel. Subscribe, share. Leave your comments. Let me know what you guys are doing. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the, the blessings you, you give by sharing your thoughts and by sharing with each other and lifting each other up. Namaste, my friends, and God bless.